Hello, hello. I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we are going to talk about the hormonal control you need to know to do well on the MCAT. Let's get into it. All right. So the first hormone we want to talk about is aldosterone. Aldosterone acts on the distal convoluted tubule, or DCT, in this diagram here. Its role is to increase the amount of sodium reabsorption. And this is important to memorize. But the MCAT will want you to apply that knowledge. So let's practice that now. If sodium reabsorption is increasing, what will that do to the water in the DCT? Well, more water will also reabsorb due to osmosis. Water will follow the sodium. And this will happen in roughly equal parts. Because of this, predict what will happen to blood pressure and blood volume. A good prediction would be that blood osmolarity will remain unchanged because the salt is being balanced by more water reabsorption. How about blood volume? Well, this is a little bit more straightforward. Blood volume only depends on the amount of water entering, not the amount of sodium. Because more water is entering, we will see more water move into the bloodstream, therefore increasing blood volume. So what this looks like, if we imagine that right here is our blood vessels. First, we have sodium come in. So this is get pumped across, and we have two moving. So initially, it looks like this has become saltier in the blood, but then more water also is going to move in in equal parts. So the net change in salinity or osmolarity is zero. However, we now have more water in here, and that's going to lead to an increase in that blood volume and no increase in blood osmolarity. Now that you understand the relationship between aldosterone, sodium, water, blood volume, and pressure, you are good to go on the MCAT. Now let's turn our attention to another equally important hormone, antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone is also known as ADH, and it's going to act on the descending loop of Henle where it causes more aquaporons to be inserted. Show that these again in purple. Get rid of some of the water that's already being reabsorbed here. Just have one down there. If we add more aquaporons into the descending loop of Henle, this is going to allow more water to flow from inside the loop of Henle to outside the loop of Henle. And what's outside? The blood. So this is reabsorption. What's going on is ADH is increasing the reabsorption of water. Now, just like with aldosterone, we want to take this a step further because that's exactly what the MCAT is going to do. So take a moment and figure out what is going to happen to blood volume, blood pressure, and blood osmolarity. Okay, so we have more water being reabsorbed into the blood. This will effectively dilute the amount of salts in the veins, causing blood to have a lower osmolarity. At the same time, more water is moving in. This movement of water into the blood will then increase blood volume. And in turn, if blood volume has increased, we are also going to see an increase in blood pressure. So just with like aldosterone, let's go up to the side here and add a vein and see what it's doing. So ADH, we're just increasing water movement. And there's already some amount of salt in here. But we're not bringing more salt in. More salt can't go in. It just bounces right off because it's charged here. So the more salt isn't going to flow in. Only water is flowing in. So what this is going to do is increase blood volume because we have more water. Therefore, that's going to increase blood pressure. And we're going to see a decrease in blood osmolarity because the sodium is not changing in the blood. We're adding more water. We're diluting it. So now let's practice an application. So now, so now let's practice an application of this, like you would actually see on the MCAT. In diabetes, ADH secretion is inhibited. What will this do to the thirst of a diabetic? And what will it do to urine output? Take a moment. Remember what we talked about with aldosterone and ADH and solve this. All right. Now that you've had a moment to think about this, let's jump into it. First things first, let's write down what we know about ADH. We know that ADH causes a increase in water reabsorption. How does water reabsorption fit into being thirsty? Well, if we're reabsorbing more water, we need to consume less 
to drink. So in a higher rate of water reabsorption, will it will inhibit thirst. How about with urine output? Well, again, in just the same way, if we are reabsorbing more water, we're going to be producing less urine. So we are also inhibiting urine output. Okay, so now that we understand the relationship that ADH typically has between thirst and urine output, we have to now add in what the question is asking of us. We're inhibiting ADH. So let's just say that X is inhibiting ADH. Well, logically, let's follow what this does. If X inhibits ADH, it's also going to inhibit water reabsorption. So in this case, we're inhibiting the inhibitor, which is going to ultimately cause an increase in thirst and an increase in urine output. And this allows us to perfectly match to answer choice A. Thank you so much for watching our video on the hormonal control of insulin, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.